it's something that has to happen. It's not a doc fix. It's a fix for America's seniors so that they can continue to see their doctor under Medicare and some other uh, priorities that will expire soon. Uh, we want it to be in advance of. As you know, the, the uh, SGR, as you call the doc fix, you call doc fix, the SGR expires um, in just a matter of days. Don't you love hearing elected officials talk money? Despite what the elected wonderkins will tell you, there is indeed an automatic nature to the billions of dollars in governmental waste we talk about on a daily basis. No one even thinks about it, and your tax dollars are going to fund things that make no sense. Every week we take it upon ourselves to find that sense and seek to enrage you to the point of screaming to your lawmakers. That's what you're supposed to be doing. We do that by welcoming back the Vice President of Policy and Communications for Citizens Against Government Waste, Leslie Page. Leslie, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Ed. I'm sorry I'm having to do this on the phone. That's no problem whatsoever. Are you kidding? We're still going to enrage a few people here today. Leslie, oh, that's yeah. our job. Oh, yeah. We need to do that. Because what struck me today was, here's from the Government Accountability Office, noting that waste and fraud surpassed last year's waste and fraud by $19 billion. That's an 18% increase. $19 billion. Where's all that money going, Leslie? Well, the top three programs that, uh, that cause this, the, the top three programs that are plagued with wasteful spending or what we call in the jargon these days improper payments, isn't that a nice null neutralized way of saying it, but our Medicare, Medicaid, and the Earned Income Tax Credit, uh, but there are 10 programs at least that have a 10% or higher improper payment rate, and when you put those all together, you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars a year being lost for, uh, you know, and, and absolutely and wasted. And by the way, that number that GAO has does not include several very large programs, including what we call welfare programs, te uh, temporary assistance for needy families. is not even counted. How much more money would we be talking in it? And it might be a guess on your part, but if we were to include that, what kind of dollar figure are we at? Well, that program, in, for example, Ed, is a $16 billion program, and if, if the other percentages hold true, which is that they're over 10%, or some of them are as high as 12.5%, Medicare, for example, is 12.5% and rising, you're looking at another couple billion dollars for each of these programs. So we're probably looking at another ten, a couple more ten, tens of you know, tens of billions of dollars. When we're talking about improper payments, don't we mean in many cases the payment to dead people? <laughs> oh, absolutely. P payments to dead people and incarcerated people are among some of the more egregious examples of improper payments. Improper payments is a nice generic term for any payment that shouldn't be made, essentially. We also underpay people, but, you know, as you can imagine, in the federal government, the vast majority of the, of the erroneous payments are overpayments, for sure. Yes, dead people. Uh, the Social Security Administration just released a report in early March that told us that, there are, that they have on the books 6.5 million people who have birth dates prior to 1901, which would make them 114 years old. Yeah, they're likely not here collecting. Yeah, they're likely not collecting anything today, we would guess. Yeah, right. well, those Social Security numbers are still being used, essentially. So what we know is that a huge percentage of those people are using those Social Security numbers to collect benefits that we know that's fraud. Will the current budgets, I mean, we hear all these budgets back and forth and how this will fix this and this will give enough money here. Will the current budget fix this or at least make a dent in fixing it? Uh, the budgets are, are, are still being decided in the House and Senate. The one that you mentioned earlier, though, the, the doc fix bill, the SGR, has some provisions that should be helpful, but the SGR is a very mixed bag. There is going to be increases in the deficit. There are there is new spending in that program, and there are there are plenty of indications that it's going to cost money and drive the deficit up in the short run. And unfortunately, it also contains some good provisions. For example, one of the provisions that's included in this SGR bill that passed the House is a provision that would finally, after all these years, remove Social Security numbers from beneficiaries' Medicare cards. I mean, we have we have huge stolen identity refund fraud going on, and seniors are by far the most vulnerable, and yet we still don't have a law that says, you know, we still have our Medicare beneficiaries carrying around cards with their numbers on it. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, we are out of time. We're out of numbers and we're out of time right now. <laughs> but we can certainly say that uh, one of these days we'll get together and talk about the master death file. Uh, which oh, I, yeah. Which uh, is another thing, and that's where a lot of this is coming from. We remind everybody, we do this every week because, quite frankly, nobody else does. They need to tell you that your money's being wasted. It is citizens against the government waste. Leslie Page joins us. We focus every week on a different facet and tell you all the bad things about your money. Thanks, Leslie. Have a great weekend. You have a great weekend, too, Ed. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care. Midpoint continues right after this.